Zombies gather, and a boy violently knocks on a door while three others block it. The class representative asks them to let the boy inside because he is their classmate. She claims to take responsibility. They open the door, but the boy has already turned into a zombie. Everyone runs, and Yi Bei gets bitten. Yi Bei then sees strange memories that look like he is being experimented on in the future, and is transported back to the past for revenge. Yi Bei wakes up and realizes he is back in the past. He recognizes a young Li Roshi, ordering them to open the door. Yi Bei laughs, seeing they have succeeded. He asks Li Roshi to take responsibility and open the door. She complains, but Yi Bei calls her a hypocrite. She gets mad and tries to open the door, but the zombie pushes it open. Li Roshi falls to the ground and sees their zombified classmate. Everyone panics, and Li Roshi tries to use a classmate as a shield. Just then, Yi Bei pushes her toward the zombie. The zombie grabs her, but Yi Bei smashes the zombie's head. The zombie and Li Roshi fall outside. Even if she asks for help, Yi Bei ignores her and closes the door. They block the entrance with heavy objects. They stop hearing Li Roshi scream. The others are now scared of Yi Bei, but some of them thank him and exclaim that Li Roshi deserves to die. He then orders them to move aside, and he checks outside. His classmates then close the door, but he just smiles and leaves. He approaches a zombie and smashes its head. He picks up a green stone from there. It is an energy stone, the origin of the apocalypse, and a resource for apocalypse mechanics. Another zombie comes, and Yi Bei kills it while his classmates watch him. They argue about whether they should let him come back or not, and Yi Bei suddenly tells them to go out and enjoy killing zombies. A zombie comes, but he easily subdues it, and his classmates watch in fear. Yi Bei wishes them good luck and leaves. He explains that this is the start of humanity's apocalypse, and Li Roshi had gotten him bitten by a zombie. He only survived after cutting his arm. He suffered for 50 years until he met the mechanic, who sent him back to the past. A group of zombies attacks Yi Bei, but he easily kills them, and a familiar face watches him, swearing to kill Yi Bei. A horde of zombies arrives, and Yi Bei runs. He notices a convenience store and knocks down the shutter while acting injured. Zombies arrive, but he slips inside the store. He checks the dark store and notices a girl hiding behind the counter. A gang of thugs is watching the entire scene. Seeing that a student easily kills the zombies, Centipede laughs, thinking that it will also be easy for them. Meanwhile, Yi Bei asks the girl to come out, but she is not responding. Yi Bei then acts injured, and the girl comes out. He grabs her and orders her to hand over the shutter controller. The girl runs to hide, and Yi Bei scolds her for being gullible. In a flashback, Yi Bei with a chopped arm gets treated by the girl. She told him to rest after getting some food. Yi Bei was thankful to the girl. Just then, she screamed, and Centipede tricked the girl into believing that they were dying of hunger. He claimed the store as his. He grabbed the girl, and Yi Bei watched as she was mistreated and tortured. Back to the present, Yi Bei swears to protect her this time. Even if she thinks he's evil, he has to be harsh on her. The girl comes to give him clothes, but Yi Bei treats her harshly. He must fix her weak personality. Next, he needs to get equipment and weapons and train his body. Meanwhile, Centipede orders everyone to kill the zombies and rob the convenience store. Yi Bei comes out and asks the girl where her family is. She mentions that her father went out to stock up on resources. Yi Bei then scolds her for letting him in and warns her that there will be others who will trick him. He orders her to follow all his words from now on. Centipede's group is overwhelmed by the zombies. He uses some underlings as bait, and he escapes. The girl gives Yi Bei food and hot water. He eats quietly until Centipede climbs up the window. He orders Yi Bei to pull him up, but Yi Bei pours hot water on his hand instead. The girl stops Yi Bei, and he gets mad at her. She insists on not harming others. As he climbs the window, Centipede promises to be kind. Yi Bei sees a box cutter. Centipede comes inside and declares that he now owns the place. Centipede laughs at the girl's naivety and tells her to be his slave. He is mad at Yi Bei for pouring hot water on him. The little girl tells them that there is a lot of food inside, and everyone can eat together and be happy. Frustrated, Centipede tries to grab her, but Yi Bei cuts his fingers. He tries one more time, but Centipede kicks him away. Centipede steps on Yi Bei and keeps stomping on him. Yi Bei spits blood on Centipede, and Centipede slams him on the wall. He continues stomping Yi Bei until the little girl stabs Centipede with the box cutter. Centipede pushes her aside, and Yi Bei hits Centipede's neck with a wooden stick. Centipede falls to the floor, and the girl cries out that she killed someone. Yi Bei tells her that she did what she needed to do. She whines that she only wanted to save him, but Yi Bei confirms that Centipede is still alive and tells her to take a shower first. She exclaims to save him, but Yi Bei kicks her outside the room. Yi Bei drags Centipede to the window and kicks him outside. The zombies then start flocking to Centipede. Yi Bei noticed the girl was still behind the door. He tells her that he killed him. The girl feels bad, but Yi Bei exclaims that she would have died if she had saved him. He further exclaims that this is the apocalypse now, and they need to kill to survive. Yi Bei walks away, and the girl follows him, but she suddenly falls. Yi Bei brought her into the room and discovered that she had a fever. He looked for medicine and found a medicine box. 
he finds the girl's illness record inside. Yao Yu Er was diagnosed with leukemia. He then realizes why she wants to save people. Yi Bei notices something in his pocket and brings out the green stones. He wonders if it is effective for illnesses. The next morning, Yi Bei wakes up and sees the girl feel better. He then tells her to bring him food and pack up things because they are going to look for her father. Yu Er argues that she is told to stay, but her father has been gone for three days. Yi Bei suggests saving him, but Yu Er is undecided. Yi Bei gets mad at her for saving a random person but not his father. She panics and runs downstairs. Meanwhile, a military Humvee plows through the zombies on the streets. Yu Bei packs food, and Yu Er comes out packed like she's going on an outing. They eat before setting out, but suddenly, a Humvee crashes on the store's shutters. A fat guy comes out and is happy to see a convenience store. He gets inside and hoards the food scattered on the floor. Just then, Yi Bei told him not to move while putting a box cutter on the fat guy's neck. The fat guy throws food at Yi Bei and runs outside. He gets into the Humvee, but Yi Bei follows him inside. As he tries to stab the fat guy, Yu Er shouts not to kill anymore. She exclaims that if the fat guy dies, no one will pay for the store's damages. The two pause and Yi Bei agrees. As payment, he requests the Humvee and a driver. He tells Yu Er to get inside and the fat guy apologizes. As Yu Er lifts the heavy bag, a horde of zombies approaches them. She quickly gets in, and they start driving away. The fat guy maneuvers the car around the block, killing zombies on the way. Yu Bei gets mad, but the fat guy exclaims that Yu Bei didn't tell him yet where to go. Yu Er confirms that her father is stocking resources at Fudong's supermarket. The fat guy claims that the supermarket is already full of zombies. Yu Bei tells him to shut up and drive there. The group continues to travel while the fat guy sings. Yu Bei tells him to stop, and the car stops moving. They don't have fuel anymore. They panic, and zombies start flocking around the Humvee. Yu Bei sees something and kicks the door open. He unsheathed a blade and sliced through a zombie's head. He continues slashing through the zombies, and the fat guy gets shocked. Yu Bei orders the fat guy to come out and collect fuel from the nearby vehicles. He instructs Yu Er to remain in the car. The fat guy suddenly remembered having reserved fuel at the back of the Humvee. Yu Bei gets mad, and the fat guy claims he just forgot about it due to shock. He tells the fat guy to help him with something first. He orders him to collect the pearls inside the zombie's heads. The fat guy pulls out a shovel and digs out the pearls. He asks if they are worth anything, and Yi Bei tells him to shut up. He realizes something and plans to keep one for himself. Later, Yi Bei finishes off the zombies in the area, and the fat guy collects a lot of pearls. The fat guy then adds the fuel, and Yi Bei discovers Yu Er in pain. He gives her medicine and tells the fat guy to drive off. The fat guy introduces himself as Zhao Hang, an owner of a vehicle repair shop. He made a sudden stop, surprising Yi Bei. They then discover that the road to the supermarket is blocked by fire. Yu Er awakens to see the road block. Zhao Heng suggests changing directions, but Yi Bei suggests finding weapons and equipment first. Yi Bei asks Zhao Heng for a nearby electronics store, and Zhao Heng remembers something and drives. He remembers his blacksmith friend who made the sword Yi Bei is holding. After some time, they arrived at the blacksmith shop, but zombies greeted them. Yu Er offers help in collecting the pearls. A man observes them and kills his men who have barged into his room. Another man reports about Yi Bei, and the man rewards him with noodles. The man orders him to clean the corpse and orders the others to fetch Yi Bei's group. Yi Bei's group clears off the zombies and barges into the blacksmith shop. He notices that the stove is still hot, but Zhao Hang's friend is missing. He orders Zhao Hang to bring in the pearls they collected. Zhao Hang suggests collecting the weapons hanging on the walls, but Yi Bei claims that they will be useless in the future. He plans to create a stronger weapon. Yi Bei heats the forge and starts the craft. He heats the blade and hammers it with concentration. He melts the pearls, and they immediately melt, making them look magical. Yu Bei pours his blood into the melted pearls, pours the solution into the blade he forged, and continues hammering. Meanwhile, a group of men creeps around the shop. Zhao Hang is perplexed by Yu Bei's ability to craft. After some time, the materials are now prepared. Meanwhile, Yu Er prepares some food but gets abducted by the men outside. Yu Bei combines the materials and finishes a sword that can be seen in movies. He goes for the last step, to activate the weapon. He applies a high voltage, making the sword glow green, and Yi Bei completes the sword. Just then, they hear Yu Er's voice and discover her being abducted. They threaten Yi Bei to put down his weapon, but Yi Bei goes for a huge swing with his word, and a green slash flies at one of them and cuts a person in half. They panic, and Yi Bei swings his sword again, killing the others. Suddenly, zombies appear, but Yi Bei slashes them all. The kidnappers escape toward a building, and Zhao Hang pursues them. He stops seeing that they have a base. Zhao Hang worries that there is a bus blocking the gate. More men come out and threaten him to leave his Humvee. Zhao Hang tries to fight back, but a green slash passes by and kills the attackers. Yi Bei destroys the bus, and they get in. Someone throws a knife at him, but he blocks it and kills the thrower. Yu Bei dodges a gunshot, and the leader comes out. He wants to work with Yu Bei. Yu Bei tries to make a slash, but the leader points his gun at Yu Er. Yu Bei smiles and exclaims that he needs help with his big research. The leader laughs and welcomes him. Yu Bei tells Zhao Heng to go away if he wants. Zhao Heng warns him while slowly backing away. Men led Yu Bei inside the building. 
Later, Luo Xiang introduces himself as the leader of the group. Yi Bei introduces himself and claims that he knows what Luo Xiang knows about the apocalypse's start. He further claims that Luo Xiang is establishing the Nether Dragon Gang. Luo Xiang gets surprised and gets more interested in Yi Bei. Yi Bei then shows the green pearl, and Lu Xiang laughs out loud, exclaiming that Yi Bei really knows him. Luo Xiang then confirms that he knows a little secret about the zombie virus. He asks if the pearls are related to Yi Bei's sword, and Yi Bei did confirm. He hands over his sword to someone, but the man can't lift the sword. Yi Bei starts explaining how the pearls form inside the zombies' heads. The pearls are called energy black metal, which gathers energy as time passes. It has great adaptability for the body and metal, making it great for making weapons. Luo Xiang asks if it can make someone a god when they eat it. Yi Bei laughs and explains that most who tried it became zombies. Luo Xiang asks what happened to the rest, but Yi Bei asks for their attention first and activates the black metal, making the building's engine short fuse. In the dark, Yi Bei picks up his sword and cuts Luo Xiang in half. He immediately kills Luo Xiang because he is the one who used the black energy metal to wreak havoc in the future. He then proceeds to kill the rest of the gang. Yi Bei checks on Yu Er, and Zhao Heng arrives. He picks up a gun to keep, and Zhao Heng commends Yi Bei's plan. He notices a woman and claims to have been captured by Luo Xiang. She brings them to Luo Xiang's resources. Meanwhile, a gang member survives and sees a dead Luo Xiang. He notices and picks up a black metal and recalls Yi Bei talking about it. He swallows the black metal, and he screams in pain. Yu Er wakes up, and Yi Bei enters the room with resources in a bag. Because it is raining outside, they decided to stay for the night. Meanwhile, Ru Xi is enjoying a shower when a man appears and tries to assault her. She screams for help, and the windows shatter. The man angrily checks on it, and he shouts in pain. Ru Xi takes a peek and sees the man impaled by a thorny monster. Ru Xi screams, and the monster cries out that he is not a monster. Ruashi asks who he is, and he explains that he was shot and ate the black metal. He mentions that Yibei dug the black metal out of zombies' heads and ate one to survive. Ruashi gets agitated hearing Yibei's name and asks for his location. She asks the monster to bring her there so she can kill Yibei. She claims that they are enemies. The monster explains that he feels energized now and asks Ruashi why she is not scared of him. Ruashi laughs and seduces the monster with her body to hunt down Yibei. The monster exclaims that he'll help her. Just then, he releases Ruashi and screams in pain. The next morning, Yi Bei's group leaves the building, and Zhao Heng cries upon seeing the Humvee's crushed roof. Yi Bei then realizes something is wrong. He slashed the roof and turned the Humvee into a convertible. The engines still work, and they set out. Along the way, they notice a group of students. They were Yi Bei's classmates. The students run away from the zombies, and Yi Bei slashes the zombies chasing them. He greets them, and they thank him. They are planning to go to a human camp on Lake Island. They ask Yi Bei for a ride and food to eat. Yi Bei tells them to shut up. He will share food if they do something for him. He asks Zhao Heng to explain the rules. Zhao Heng teaches them how to dig for the black metal. She even assures them that it is easy and not scary. Yi Bei slashes the zombies, and the rest collect the black metal. Two hours later, they collected a lot of black metal. Yi Bei orders Zhao Heng to give them food as payment, even if it hurts. Just then, Something jumps on the car, and the thorny monster appears. Yi Bei recognizes it as a mutated ability user. He orders everyone to run and tries to fight the thorny zombie. Just then, Rua Xi appears and surprises her classmates. She orders the thorny zombie to kill Yi Bei. As Yi Bei and the zombie confront each other, a ball of flame almost hits them. From afar, they discover a mutated flame zombie. Yi Bei and Rua Xi get surprised, and she asks the thorny zombie if it is his friend, but he doesn't know. The flame zombie leaps and attacks the thorny zombie. The thorny zombie pushes it back, but it fights back with its flame breath. Yi Bei and the others ran. Rua Xi orders the thorny zombie to follow them, but he is pinned down by the flame zombie. The flame zombie fires off the flame and almost hits Yi Bei's group. Yi Bei gets separated from his classmates and orders them to hide. Yi Bei's group enters the underground parking lot. Meanwhile, the thorny zombie asks the flame zombie to talk things out. He mentions the black metal, and the flame zombie cries upon hearing the word. He mentions being forced to eat one by group, and he wants to kill them all. The thorny zombie sympathizes with him, and Ruashi interrupts them. The thorny zombie claims that he can track Yi Bei's sin. The thorny zombie explains to the flame zombie that Yi Bei is knowledgeable with black metal and might know how to turn them back into humans. The flame zombie then offers help. After some time, Yi Bei's group is discovered. The thorny zombie attacks Yi Bei, but he shoots Ruashi using his gun. The thorny zombie panics and blocks all of Yi Bei's gunshots. Yi Bei fires off a slash, and the thorny zombie runs off with Ruashi. The flame zombie attacks Yi Bei and Yu Air distracts it. Yi Bei hits the nearby pipe and water extinguishes the flame zombie. He slashes its right arm and tries again to slash, but the flame zombie dodges. The thorny zombie warns Yi Bei, and both mutants with Ruashi run away. Yi Bei gets weak and feels relieved that two ability users ran away. Zhao Heng asks for their origin, and Yi Bei explains that, by a 1 in 10,000 chance, a person swallowing the black metal can become a strong ability user. Zhao Heng asks why Yi Bei knows all of this and Yi Bei promises to tell them in the future. They then continue to move out. They discover the car is totally unusable. Yu Er then mentions that she knows this location and that her father's old friend lives there. She points out the direction and claims that he is a good person. She claims that his house has tall walls and lots of computers. Yi Bei then asks to check the place, assuming that her father is already there. Meanwhile, the thorny zombie collects black metal and goes back to check on Ruashi. 
She trembles in pain and asks for all the black metal he collected. The thorny zombie goes out and talks with the flame zombie. They plan how to capture Yu Bei so they can become humans again. The flame zombie introduces himself as Zhou Bo, while the thorny zombie is Wang Xing. Meanwhile, Yi Bei's group is getting nearer to their destination. They encounter a flood and enter a tunnel through the waterway. Just then, Yi Bei falls unconscious and drowns. Wang Xing checks on Ruo Xi and discovers her groaning in extreme pain. A dark, ominous aura blasts out from the building. In a flashback, Ruo Xi tortures Yi Bei and drowns him in the water. Yi Bei wakes up and sees a sleeping Yu Er beside his bed. She wakes up and informs him that they are at his father's friend's house. Zhao Hang appears with food and an old man appears while commenting on their group's combination. Yu Er explains that the old man discovered them through the CCTVs and recognized Yu Er. He saw everything and asked where Yu Bei got his weapon from. He tries to get up, but the old man explains that the sword drained his energy. He introduces himself as Zhang Han, and Yi Bei remembers the famous zombie researcher from his other future. He claims to be a self-proclaimed professor, and Yi Bei thinks it is just a coincidence. Zhang Han asks to research the weapon for the sake of humanity's future. Yi Bei agrees, but he wants something in return a living zombie. He leads them to his lab and is amazed that only Yi Bei can lift the sword. Yi Bei gets impressed by his lab, and he plans to make a weapon. Zhang Han insists on watching him, but Yi Bei claims that his process is a secret. Later on, Yu Er monitors the CCTVs through Zhang Han's computer room. She hopes to see her father come. Zhang Han asks if the other two men with her are alright. He is scared of Yi Bei's intelligence and aura. He also mentions how Xiao Heng looks like a person with ulterior motives, and Zhao Heng hears it all. Zhao Heng claims Zhang Han is weirder because he has a research lab, fuel tanks, a solar cell field, and huge compartments for food and clothes. Zhang Han exclaims that he expected the apocalypse a long time ago and prepared for it. His goal is to save all humans, but Zhao Hang points out that using CCTVs invades people's privacy. Yi Bei interrupts them and takes Zhao Hang's blood. Yi Bei leaves as he warns them to prepare for something worse. Meanwhile, Yi Bei's classmates are stranded. A phone concludes that it is better to take some black metals for themselves. He wants to have the power to break through the zombies. Just then, they notice a purple tornado from afar. On the other hand, Yi Bei has been working hard to create weapons. Yu Er then exclaimed that she had seen her father on the CCTV. Zhao Hang goes out, and Zhang Han orders him to go around the mountain. He gets mad at the old man's nagging. Zhao Hang walks further and encounters a horde of zombies. He feels confident after gaining a weapon from Yu Bei. He slashes through them and asks for more. He notices the huge tornado raging from afar. He keeps killing zombies and asks Zhang Han if they have seen the tornado. Based on his sensors, it detects that the tornado is around level 6 and orders Zhao Hang to retreat. Zhao Hang apologizes to Yu Er for not finding her father. Zhang Han assures Yu Er that her father can survive. Just then, Zhang Han's zombie detector goes off, and Zhao Hang confirms that he is bringing in a zombie. He remembers Yi by wanting to research one. Zhang Han gets excited and storms out of the monitoring room. Zhao Hang cuts its limbs, and Zhang Han gets excited. Zhang Han now gets along well with Zhao Hang, and Yu Er is happy to see them. Meanwhile, the bad weather clears out, and the zombies surprisingly mutate into a more grotesque form. They can now move quickly and attack people hiding in their homes. They start attacking people's homes, and screams are heard everywhere. These mutated zombies attack Yu Bei's classmates, but a white mutated zombie kills the zombies. They recognize the mutated zombie as a phone. Screams envelop the streets, and a familiar group watches the scene. Zhou Bo is amazed, and Ru Xi asks for Yi Bei's whereabouts. Wang Xing confirms he is in the lab in the mountains and offers to kill Yi Bei immediately. Ru Xi stops him because she wants to kill Yi Bei slowly with her own hands. She wants him to feel despair and hopelessness. Meanwhile, Yi Bei's group is preparing to leave the lab, but Zhang Han tells them not to continue because the city is overflowing with zombies. He estimates that there are thousands of them. Zhao Hang asks if they angered the zombies enough for them to come to their location. Zhang Han asks Zhao Hang to report to Yi Bei. Zhao Hang knocks on the door, and Yi Bei already knows the news. Zhao Hang sees him relaxed and calm, but Yi Bei claims that he didn't have enough time to make equipment. Zhao Hang asks how to deal with the army of zombies. Yi Bei claims that he did warn them, and it is faster than expected. He then claims that if Zhang Han is Professor Zhang from the Legends, then he can overcome this situation. Zhao Hang gets mad at his nonsensical talk and leaves Yi Bei alone. Zhao Hang climbs a tower and sees the zombies. He panics and gets in the car. He asks Zhang Han to open the gates, and if they don't return, they'll need to find a way to escape. Yu Er worries. But Zhao Hang swears he won't die easily. He drives around and shoots the zombies with his special gun. He gets excited, and he shoots more. Can they survive this zombie wave? It seems like someone is controlling them. If you like this video, make sure to give us a like and subscribe to our channel. See you next time.